Hey guys, welcome to video 13 of the Hacked Existence How to Build a Django Site uh, tutorial series. In this video, we're going to look at implementing the Twitter API as provided by Python Twitter, which is a Python wrapper around the Twitter API, um, in order to display tweets. And at the end, we're going to look at how this improves SEO over using the standard Twitter widgets. So the first thing that we need to do, you have to go get this Python Twitter uh, package. You can get it from code.google.com slash p slash python dash twitter. You need to have it all installed. So you need to install the dependencies, simple JSON, HTTP lib2, and Python OAuth2. Um, and then go ahead and install the Python Twitter package. Here's the instructions on how to do that. I'm going to assume you've already done that. So at this point, you should be able to fire up your shell and import Twitter. If you get an error here you need to go back and make sure this is all installed properly. Alright so the first thing that we're gonna do um, let's take a look at this in action so we've got it here on the nationwide bar crawl website we're pretty much gonna rebuild this that shows all the tweets and the time they were uh, tweeted relative to the current time and so we're just going to rebuild this and we're going to put it on our index page uh, just at slash right down here below everything so the first thing that we need to do is look at our URLs and see that our index points to a view called main homepage inside of the pages app so let's go into the pages app into the views and there's our main homepage function so all that we're going to do here to pass these tweets to the index.html template. So we're going to add them to the context. We're going to say tweets, and that's going to be the response from, or the return from a function that we're going to define called get tweets. So now down here, we have to actually define that function, but I'm going to put a comment in here. Say internal function not called from a URL so that we know that this function is being called from another function um, and we're going to define this function here called get tweets um, and it doesn't have to take a request object because we're not calling it from a URL so in here we're going to start by creating an empty array called tweets and we're going to do the majority of this function inside of a try block so that we can accept any errors that happen and the first thing we're going to do is import Twitter. Um, and we do that inside of our try block so that even if you don't have Twitter installed, uh, we'll deal with it in the accept block. So um, now we need to instantiate our API. Um, and it tells you how to do that right here. Pretty much import Twitter and you say API equals Twitter.API. And that'll instantiate an object um, of the API class. Um, so create an instance of the twitter.api class and you can look at these classes to find all of the data members that make up a status or a user or direct message as provided by this wrapper um, they'll give you a bunch of information about how you can interact with them on a deeper level but for now we're just going to say api equals twitter.api um, so if you wanted to be able to post you could add all these optional uh, uh, other pieces of data to be able to authenticate to Twitter and post on behalf of a user but all that we're going to use is the get user timeline function and you don't have to authenticate to do that so we're going to skip that um, and we're going to say latest equals API dot get user timeline so again that's that function we just looked at and we're going to pass it the username hacked existence because now we're going to iterate through the array that gets returned from this function so we're going to say for tweet in latest and we're going to say status equals tweet dot text and again you can look up the uh, status class here to find all of the things that a status includes or a tweet object includes this is a status object here um, and so here we're going to say tweet date equals tweet dot relative created at um, and this is also part of the status class 
Um, so there's all kinds of different ways that you can have Twitter pass down the date here. So we're going to use this one. So it says um, how many days it's been since the tweet um, until now. All right, so now we have to append these two objects to our tweets array. So we're going to say tweets.append. And we're going to say status, status, and date is going to be tweet date. Um, so for each tweet in the latest array, it's going to go through and add the status and the date to the tweets array um, that we're going to pass back in a minute here. And we're pretty much done with our try block now. So the only thing we have left to do is accept and return. So we're going to accept if you can't import Twitter or if the API is down or Twitter's not responding. We we're just going to say tweets.append and we're going to say status um, follow us at hacked existence and we're going to say date and that's going to say let's say about 10 minutes ago so this is a fake tweet this isn't real um, what happens is if there's any problem getting the tweets from Twitter we're just going to pass this tweet back and you can do a whole array of them and have it say all kinds of stuff um, but that way it won't ever error out if there's an error it'll just show this default tweet so then the last thing we need to do to finish our function is return tweets and we're going to pass it that tweets array. So um, the context variable for the main home page function is going to call the get tweets function which is going to return the array of statuses and dates for um, the get user timeline function and that's going to pass it to the index.html template um, as a variable named tweets. So now we need to go set up our template to actually display these tweets. So in our index template, um, you can see our index here. We've got view the beers list. Um, that's right here. So underneath of that, we're going to uh, make a UL here. And we're going to give it an ID of home tweets. And then in here we're going to do a for loop and we're going to say for tweet in tweets.tweets. And we're going to do an li. Um, and we'll give that a class of tweet text. So we're going to say tweet.status. And then we're going to do class equals tweet uh, time. Say tweet.date. Um, and then we're going to end our for loop. So that's pretty much it. Let's take a look at what that looks like now. All right, so if we refresh our home page, there's a list of tweets inside of a UL. Um, so now we can add some uh, styles to it, put this image in the background, stuff like that, make the date class or the time class uh, smaller and a different color. Um, if you want to get crazy with it, all these links here, you can actually go into your view in pages um, and you can add some stuff in here uh, before you append the tweet using regular expressions to actually add in HTML uh, a tags so that these links actually link um, but yeah for now we've got all this dumping just a little bit of styling will make it look a lot nicer so now let's look at what this does for SEO so if you use the standard Twitter widget, say I want to put it on my website, I want the profile widget, uh, my username is hacked, existence. So this is what it would show up looking like uh, on your website if you were to just say finish and grab code. 
they give you this JavaScript here that you can dump into your template um, and you don't have to do any programming it'll just pop this box right in um, so to understand why this is bad for SEO you have to understand how the HTTP request framework works so if you use something like this on your site what happens is when you request this web page from the server um, this block of code is just copied and pasted right into your template and the server actually returns the block of code this exact block then what happens is your browser as it's parsing down the code from this template gets to this block that you pasted in there and says oh this is actually a JavaScript file loading from TWIMG.com so it makes a second request back out to Twitter which fills in a whole div here um, with all the user info and it fills all of this stuff into it the problem with SEO is when Google hits your website and sees this block of code they just disregard it they don't go and ask Twitter for the tweets and give you SEO on that what we've done here effectively is instead of pasting an external JavaScript file into our template we actually when you make the request to our server to get that web page our server makes the request out to Twitter gets all the tweets fills them into the template and sends the whole template back so if you actually view the source on this you can see all of this text is directly in a UL that didn't have to parse from a second server call so when Google hits this web page it actually sees all of this text and your SEO is twofold because first every time Google hits your site as long as you're updating and tweeting often Google is going to think that you're updating this block of text on your home page often which is good the other thing it really does for you is gives you all these keywords that you put in your tweets um, Google sees all of those every time they look at your page whereas if you use this standard profile widget they don't see any of this you don't get SEO points for any of these keywords alright so hopefully that's a nice little introduction to Twitter for you guys thanks for watching and stay tuned